Welcome to ExpertDoc Smart Flows. In this session, we'll give an introduction to the Smart Flows REST API. To use our API, you should be able to write script or code that can call our API. You should be able to retrieve data from your application, and you should be able to send that data to our API in XML format. In this example, we're going to create a quote based on XML data. For our XML, we'll create an XSD, an XML schema. From that XSD schema, when we can create a SmartFlows dataset. We'll create a new dataset. We'll set the type to schema and we'll upload our XSD file. We'll choose the root element and click Create. We are now in the dataset builder. Here's your first dataset. If you ever change something to the structure of your data, you can upload a revision. We'll also create a sample, a sample file for testing our templates and our flows. We can create a sample by uploading our XML file. Next, we'll create a template. Click Create, give it a name. Choose your data set that you have just created and set the type to standard. After creating the template, we can design the template. You can download it and then open it in Word. This is an example of our quote template. I've used fields from our data set to build this template. We have some template builder videos available for you to get you going on this. After you're done, you publish your template to save the changes to the server. Next, we'll create a flow to generate a document from the template. We'll give our flow a name, choose our template, and if we want, we can add output and delivery blocks like email or print or save to file. Set the type to simple. Here we are in the flow builder. We're going to check a couple of settings. First, we'll set the flow to start from another program. We'll start the flow from your application. The flow is going to use your data set. We don't have to collect any data, as you'll be sending your XML data with your API call. In the gener Generate Document step, make sure the generated document is added to the flow output. Check the data set. And finally, you can set the document name and the document format. After that, you can save your flow. One more setting in SmartFlows we need to authenticate our API calls. For this, you should create a user and an API call. Set the password.
and set the role to administrator. We now have successfully created an extra user. For this user, we're going to create an API key. Copy this API key and treat it like a password. We have created a data set, we've created a template, we've created a smart flow, and we've created an API key for authentication. Now let's have a look at our API calls. Your project contains a Swagger page with all available API calls. We are most interested in the Flows API controller to start a flow and the Documents API controller to retrieve the documents. We'll be using five calls, one to select a flow, one to start a flow, one to check the status of a flow and see if it has completed, one to get the flow's output, and one to retrieve the document. You will need at least three of those to start the flow, get its output, and retrieve the document. From your code, you should be able to create an API call with a request header containing the API key and your XML data for your quote in the body of the request. The method will be get or post and you'll get response back in JSON format. From this response, you should be able to filter out a flow ID an execution ID or a document ID, depending on the call. To simulate those calls, I will use Postman. Our first call would be to list all the available flows. The method would be get, we'll call our API controller, and we'll send in the header our API key. The body of this request can be empty. This will give us a response in JSON with all the possible flows that you can run. We are interested in picking up from that JSON the ID of a specific flow that we want to run. So we'll take that ID from the response and pass it to the next step. A post request to the flows execution API call. We'll add our flow ID to that. We'll send again the API key in the header. And this time in the body of the request, we'll add our XML code for our documents. Let's send that. In the JSON response, I'll get back what we call an execution ID, a unique ID for this execution of a flow. We're going to use this execution ID in the next step. We're going to check the status of our API call. We can copy that. Again, we're going to send the API key in the header and the body can be empty. This time, it gives us a, a status message in return. Over here, it's success. It can be success, error, or running. So you need to keep pulling this wait for completion step until you have a status returned for your API call. We're going to use that same execution ID to get the flow output. From the flow output, we have to retrieve a document ID. You can find that on the, under state, output, 
model, and then a document ID. We can use this document ID to make a call to the document controller. We'll create a GET request to the document controller and in the URL we'll pass the document ID that we have just gathered. In the headers, again, the API key and no body. This step will return the generated document as a base64 encoded string. I can save that uh, to my local disk, but you might as well save it into your application. You can also add a step to your flow to save the document to a specific location. Now let's open that document. And that's a good looking quote using the XML data that we've passed in our API call. Thank you for your attention and I hope to see you again in another session.